you today about the kind of high-tech future, but also how we can't forget about our high-touch past. Sometimes when I speak to audiences around the world, I get asked the question, Anders, weren't things better in the good old days? We're somewhat irrational when it comes to this concept of change, disruption, and doing things differently, aren't we? We're living in an entirely new world. We need to upgrade the way we think about change. Digitization of everything or digital disruption doesn't just mean that we need to go truly digital, but in fact that we need to combine the best of the digital world with the best of the analog world and truly go digi-log. Who remembers their first MP3 download? Hang on, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was probably an illegal one, but thank you for sharing anyway. We're, it's a safe environment in here, right? Um, but how many of you remember the first kind of analog vinyl record you bought or you were given, or maybe a tape? It has something different to it, doesn't it? And I just bring up this visual here because when my brother and I are out and about, people go, sing us that song. <laughs> and we go, what song? And they go, that song, 500 miles. We need to connect and provide value to digital minds and connect with analog hearts. If I say Google, would you say more digital or more analog? Digital. So it's almost cynical that in the mail, who remembers physical mail? <laughs> in the mail, I get one of these. It's very thin, as you can see. It's a printed voucher. A printed analog voucher telling us to communicate digitally and actually sign up for Google AdWords. What is this an example of? Not just digital or analog, in fact it is digi-log, combining the best of both aspects of communications. Who feels that face-to-face -face is important? The handshakes, right? Yeah, the chatter in the hallways, the wine-stained conversations. But equally, one way of getting people there would be doing something like TED does, the Technology Entertainment Design Conference, which releases all its videos, all its speakers, for free in a digital medium. Once again, going digilog. Apple makes 50% of its revenue in-store. How? When all the other companies just went purely digital, Apple went, na 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 na. Where is the best in customer service? And they go, Ritz Carlton in New York. When you enter, you get greeted by a concierge. The concierge asks you how you're doing. If you've ever been to an Apple store, what do they have? They have a concierge who greets you at the door. Then what happens at the Ritz-Carlton is that you might feel like a whiskey to share your life's problems with the guy in the bar or the woman in the bar. Or is this just me? <laughs> yeah? Equally at Apple, you of course have technological therapy for, through the one-on-one -on -one coaching with the genius in the bar. Taking one business model, transferring it into your own industry and deriving massive, massive profits interesting flip, isn't it? And I don't think that in this world where we're kind of online, LinkedIn and hyper-connected 24-7, 365, I don't believe a computer interface can really replace a human face. The solution is not for you to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but for you to get an insight into digital disruption and realize what it means for your business and how you need to adapt with it to go digilog.